read the expected length of the, uh, of the hearing. not be changed to annually um, and but we remain at a three-year period the, the reason for that is if we do make it an annual um, renewal period it really is going to increase the burden on our staff and would require far more resources and staffing um, also if we move to page four and five we have just made some amendments to how the monies in the revolving fund shall be expended a lot of it is sort of wordsmithing um, for instance, there's no such definition for experimental use pesticides, so we did take that out. We also added a few um, uh, bullet points for uh, servicing other, other members of the, who use pesticides, including the agricultural pest control industry and the structural pest control industry, as uh, they are also users of pesticides. Um, moving to part three, which is on page seven. Um, we, we work very well with the University of Hawaii, uh, and so we really don't think it's necessary to mandate working with the university as well as creating a position with the university, but we're willing to have discussions upon that as well. Um, and finally, in part four, we're just asking that there's appropriations, uh, mandate appropriations from the special fund to be used for certain line items um, within the bill. And we're just asking, uh, those, uh, those amounts actually add up to far more than what the revenues would generate. And so we are asking that that part be stricken as well. And that's basically the gist of, a, um, of the different amendments. There's, a, there's more subtleties in that as well, but we're able to answer any questions if you should have so. Thank you very much. If we do, uh, we'll call you up after uh, this portion. Also, uh, for those of you who are testifying, we ask that you come up to the mic and everything else. Give, give your best face forward. Uh, you're on Capitol Statewide TV, so, you know, you can make a debut. Also, I think we're okay. Uh, Chancellor, University of Hawaii, Mr. or Dr. Robert Blay Brown. And I'm not oh, done. yes. All right. You changed your name, but that's okay. I, I, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm the, the third member of that, uh, that testimony. Uh, good morning, Chair. Morning. Good morning, Vice Chair and members. Uh, my name is Ken Grace. I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And uh, the university is... Uh, uh, supportive of this bill. Uh, we haven't had an opportunity to review the amendments that the department just mentioned to you and presented. Uh, what we like about this bill is that uh, it strengthens the partnership that we have had and continue to have with the Department of Agriculture. And we really like the self-funding mechanism. Uh, this is uh, These are the sorts of services that, quite honestly, it's become very difficult for the university to engage in and provide for society in Hawaii. Uh, under current funding models, which are very much emphasizing, uh, emphasizing tuition revenue and, and student count at the university as, uh, you know, based on the mission of the university to educate the public, uh, these sorts of societal service, extension service, pesticide education becomes difficult. Uh, so we really appreciate the, uh, the self-funding nature of the mechanism that's been presented here, uh, although we'd certainly defer to the Department of Agriculture on the fiscal details and on the management details. Thank you very much. Be glad Thank to address you. any questions. Uh, from Alexander Baldwin, uh, Paula Sherrill. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Paul O'Shiro representing Alexander and Baldwin. Um, we support this bill, Chair and members, as it provides additional non-general fund resources to enhance the ability of the Department of Ag and CTAR to monitor and regulate pesticide use throughout the state of Hawaii. Uh, with pesticide distribution and use uh, presently heavily regulated at both the federal and state levels, um, the establishment of new technical positions 
and um, the additional appropriations in this bill will further strengthen the um, ability of the state to oversee and enforce um, pesticide use and will also um, safeguard the employees, the public, and the environment from impacts resulting from improper pesticide use. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. From the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, Bonnet Missile Lucha. Hi, Bonnet, how are you? Aloha, Chair Suji, Hello, um, Vice Chair um, Unishi, and members of the committee. My name is Bennett Misalucha. I'm the Executive Director of the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, which is the trade association for the seed farms. We advocate for ag biotech in the state of Hawaii. Um, you have a copy of our written testimony. Um, I just wanted to reiterate some of the fine points there um, to say that um, I think uh, enforcement is a good goal and uh, expending the necessary resources to make sure it happens um, uh, towards that objective is a good thing. We would like to defer to the Department of Agriculture for the nuances and the details um, to ensure and um, be able to achieve this objective. Thank you very much. Moving on, uh, Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau President. Morning, Chair Suji, Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. We stand in strong support of this measure with the university and Department of Ag. Uh, we believe it's a common sense approach to regulate pesticides uh, and also educate the public and the users of pesticides on, uh, on their use and the reasons for their use. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Warren Watanabe, Farm Bureau of Maui. Provided testimony and support. Uh, Kristen Bauer, Consumer Specialty. Did I miss one? Got there. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, from the Cattlemen's Council, uh, Ms. Alan Gottlieb. Provided testimony and support. Kristen Bauer from the Consumer Specialty Production Association. Comments. Uh, Renee Pinnell. Western Plant Health Association. Oh, yep, she's not here. Kristen Eads on behalf of the Western Plant Health Association. We represent um, agricultural product users uh, mostly, but we support this legislation as an effort to um, ensure that enforcement and that pesticides are used properly. We are happy to self-fund this to ensure that the department has the resources they need to do that. And again, we defer to the department on how, whether one year or three years is better, we're happy to pay our fair share. Thank you very much. Dow, Dow AgroSciences, uh, Adolf Helen, in support. Cindy Goldstein, DuPont Pioneer. We'll stand on our testimony and support. Hi, Cindy, in support. The out of camera range. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kauai Coffee Company, Wayne Katayama. In support. Ellen Takemoto Monsanto. Good morning. Morning, Ellen. Chair Suji, Vice Chair Onishi. Members of the committee, my name is Alan Takimoto. I'm here on behalf of Monsanto, Hawaii. We support House Bill 504. We are encouraged that this bill will provide for a robust State Department of Agriculture that will help support, promote, and educate farmers, ranchers, and the general public on the safe use of pesticides in Hawaii. Pesticides, when used properly, are vital and beneficial tools for all aspects of our environment and the economy that includes homeowners, farmers, businesses, government agencies, and other organizations to protect the environment by controlling invasive species, control weeds, insects, and plant diseases, and to prevent or control the spread of diseases in our everyday lives. We believe that pesticide use is very serious. We take it very serious, and we use every precaution possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Takemoto. That's all we have here. Any others, uh, President, who would like to provide testimony on House Bill 504? Councilperson, how are you? Good, thank you. 
Welcome to Oahu. Okay, greetings from oh, the Big okay. Island. Okay. Um, Chair Suji and Vice Chair Onishi. Um, I think this bill is a win-win for everyone. Um, I think we all understand the um, liabilities and <laughs> harms that are uh, potential. And I think um, the one thing for me is I do hear of people like overusing and using three and four times the amount of a pesticide. And there are acute reactions, but there's also chronic and long term where people aren't aware of that and where they're not sensitive on an acute level and not realizing how what they're doing right now may be impacting them 10 to 20 years from now. Thank you, and I urge your support. Thank you very much. Did you submit? I know you submitted written testimony on, on, on other bills. others. I did not submit okay. written testimony. If you do, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We have some late testimony in support. Eric Tanoe from the HFNA Association in support will not be present. Uh, he's from the Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association. Also, Mark Philipson from Syngenta, who won't be present in support. Ms. Maluafiti, yes. Yes. <laughs> Please proceed. Alicia Maluafiti, representing Crop Life America. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and actually, Crop Life America represents the manufacturers and the registrants of the pesticide product. And lo and behold, the self-funding mechanism. We're okay with that. And uh, that's, the, that's the best news. And so I think we would defer many of the amendments to those that the Department of Ag has requested, um, primarily that three-year registration period. Even though they pay annually the fees, uh, but they pay it over that three-year period, that would, that would help if we could keep it at, at the three years. The other thing is I know you're going to be looking at the funding itself, this 10,000 pesticides at $310 a year to register. You know, looking at some of the, uh, the funding, 750000 for I, uh, IT, you know, I think we just want to make sure you understand that 750 may be necessary at the front end for the startup, but over the term of this, you know, this activity, we don't, you don't need 750, so you go back to a maintenance amount. And same with the 500,000 for the pesticide disposal program, that's fantastic, but you really just need 500 to get it started up and you don't need that much. That's $1.2 million up front, but not over, that's not forever. So we just wanted to make sure that um, in your fiscal responsibility, if you could just take a look at, you know, how much money does the Department of Ag really, Department of Ag really need and could maybe take a second look at that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, some of the other late testimony coming in. Paul Massey will be here to uh, present testimony in person, but in support. Eva Lee will not be present in person, opposition. And uh, testimony from uh, Mark Philipson, uh, Syngenta Hawaii in support. Any others here would like to testify on this uh, particular legislation? I'd like to say that uh, all of our testimonies here, we have a huge number. If you would like to summarize or stand on your testimony, that would help uh, both of us carry on uh, this program. Okay, now on House Bill 504, members, questions? No? Very good. Moving on. Moving on to House Bill 509 relating to protection on tarot. We've got reams and reams and reams of this testimony also. I'd like to say that uh, not including the late testimony that may be coming in, unless I've, uh, I'm mistaken, all are in support. Chairperson, Board of Directors, uh, Scott Enright, will represent. Standing support. I'm referring to the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, uh, is Kathy Chang here? Carty. Carty. Oh, Carty, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, 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 Carty. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm with the DLNR. Good morning, DLNR. Yes. Good morning. My name is Ian Hirokawa, and I'm with uh, DLNR um, on behalf of uh, Cardi Chang, our acting chair, or interim okay. chairperson. Uh, you know, we, I believe you have our testimony. We just uh, appreciate the intent and just offer our comments, uh, mainly 
uh, the, the primary comment is um, we the, the preamble of the bill refers to um, t you know the, the proposed Terra lands classification as a state or public lands in the conservation district, but the uh, following sections doesn't actually specify that. So we would just like an amendment to you know make it clear that these are public lands located in the conservation district. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Moving you. on uh, from the Kauai County, Kauai County Council member uh, Mason Chalk provided testimony, written testimony and support. Council member uh, Stacy Helm Crivello in support. Mark Luke, Terror Security and Purity Task Force in support. Simon Russell, Hawaii Farmers uh, Union United in support. Penny Levin, Island Restoration Institute in support. Any are present here to testify on this bill, House Bill 509? Would you call? Hi, how are you? Did I call you? You um, from the Security Task Force? Or, uh, I think um, our testimony was um, uh, submitted on behalf of our chair, Alapaki Luke. Um, oh, okay. But I'm here to I'm on I'm here on on his behalf. Uh, please identify yourself again for the committee members and. Uh, Hi. Okay. Yeah. Um, good morning. My name is Emily Kondagawa. I'm the coordinator for the Terrell Task Force. For the Terrell Task Force. Yes. Right. So I'd, I'd like okay. to stand on our written testimony, and I also um, like to um, concur with the DLNR that the amendment. I understand um, from yesterday we've been um, talking with them about amending the definition of Terrell lands to further specify that we are in fact um, referring only to those in the conservation district. So we we definitely appreciate the the further clarification that they've offered to um, have that reference to one. 183C um, for conservation district, yeah. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. I'm happy to take questions. Okay, moving on from Three Roads Farm, Penny uh, Sullenberger, I hope I pronounced that right. Daniel Bishop, in support. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. thank you. Yeah. Any others present on this particular bill, 509, that would like to Again. Hi, how are you? Again. Okay. Um, thank you. And Margaret Willey, uh, County Council, District 9, North and South Kohala. And let me just say that I am the chair of Hawaii County's Ag, Water, Energy, Sustainability Committee. And I just want to stress the importance of this um, uh, bill, in, not just in terms of agriculture, but in terms of the cultural value and that we're basically trying to inventory our treasures and our heritage. And there is um, not just uh, development issues, but also just uh, climate change and the rising sea level is jeopardizing um, terra lands that are in Hawaii County. So I just urge your support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any others here? Okay, we'll move on with uh, some of the some of the late uh, testimony in support, uh, written testimony, and uh, in support will not be present to testify. Uh, Ms. Breen, Mr. Massey in support will not be here to testify. Nancy Redfeather in support will not be here. Uh, Donna Maltz in support will not be here. Another late testimony, Chris Kowayashi in support, not here. Kathy LaSalle in support will not be here. Uh, Sylvia Senzano in support will not be here. Lemomi Dirks in support will not be present to testify. And finally, Michael Manchetti in support will not be testified. Uh, will not be present to testify. We have a whole great number of supporters right here. Any of you? If not, we'll move on. Question. Okay. Question. Yes. Uh, members, questions on House Bill 509. Question. Chair. Far right. Representative Ward. Uh, is Mark Alapikuluke the task force, security task force chair?
You're Mark. I, no, no, no. Not I, know, I'm the, I mean, it's Chair of Security Task Force. Yes. It, it was Mark's testimony. What I'm trying to get is where the boundaries are and how many acres we're talking about if this passed. Where the boundaries are yeah, for... Do we know the boundaries of the pre... I mean, this is... <coughs> the bill goes back to pre-statehood. Yeah, so... Pre so last um, last session we sent out, and I can forward again if, if your staff doesn't have, but we sent out a, um, a mapping that we did with our DLNR representative, um, Dean Uyeno, about um, what it was basically mapping the conservation, dis the conservation TMKs that are uh, under DLNR and then um, identifying, uh, listing all of those on each <coughs> island. The estimates that we have now are um, between five and 7,000 acres on all islands um, combined. And uh, those, those TMKs that are listed in that, in that report are the ones where we would expect to find these remnants of wetland terrell land structure. So not the entire TMK, of course, but um, small you know, two and three acre parcels in, um, in each of those. Are they prim prominently on Oahu, or wh wh where do they seem to appear most in which um, islands? They're, well, they're mostly located in the uplands, um, gulch areas, riparian areas. In which um, islands? On, on all islands. All right. we, we've mapped them for, for but each island. Is it Kauai, the king of taro? Well, it? they yeah, they produce um, they produce the, the most amount of taro um, in Hawaii. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, any others on House Bill 509? If not, uh, moving on to the next on the agenda, House Bill 534, uh, relating to shipment of the Hawaii grown products and uh, also relating to issues on the Kewala Basin. Our first testifier, first of three that submitted testimony, uh, Department of Agriculture. Department of testimony in support. Mahalo. Director, uh, Department of Transportation, Fort Fujikami. Uh, David Shogi on behalf of Ford is support the intent. Gain support. And uh, finally, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. We're in strong support of this measure. Um, we appreciate all the help that legislature gives to farmers and ranchers uh, each session. Um, but the best stimulus package for a farmer and rancher is a competitive price. And since we're out in the middle of Pacific, importing of inputs, um, shipping of goods out um, are a major cost factor in terms of our competitiveness. So whatever can be done to level the playing field with our counterparts on the mainland will help stimulate local production of crops. We appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other testifiers uh, present would like to testify on this particular bill? Do we have any late testimony? None. Members, questions? If not, moving on. House Bill 608, uh, authorizing issuance of special purpose revenue bonds to Waimea Nui Community Development Corporation, Department of Agriculture. Department stands on the testimony and support. In support, thank you very much. Budget and Finance, Department of Budget and Finance. None here uh, providing comments. Uh, Council Member Margaret Wiley. Hawaii County Council. Yes, um, and Margaret Willie from Waimea. And um, this is one of the projects that I have supported. And I, I you know, this is. Um, the Hawaiian homelands, and this is something that really the community themselves have been working very hard on and seeking funding from private sources and is looking how to create an agricultural sustainability um, uh, operation that and involving not just the Hawaiian homelands there, but also the greater community in terms of uh, what they're doing and the ag lots and their um, inspiring a lot of the Hawaiians there getting into whether it's the tomato business and greenhouses. So I just urge your support. And this is um, what it's all about, getting, giving people assistance in order that they are able to carry on and make it happen themselves. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, Mr. Hopkins, come on Hopkins. Uh, stand on my testimony and support, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
in support. <laughs> Are there, uh, okay, uh, Robert Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I stand in support. In support. Mr. Matthews, Bruce Matthews. In support. Mr. Mike Hodson. In the... Mike Hudson. I'm actually speaking on behalf of Mike Hudson. I'm okay. the administrator for the Waimanui CDC. And I'm here um, just to stand in support also of the testimony given, but also to answer any questions if there was any okay. on behalf of the Waimanui CDC. Well, thank you very much. Okay. okay. Moving on to the final one. Donald Strini. Donald Strini. In support. That's all we have here. Any others uh, that would like to provide testimony? Not we have a late testimony. Uh, sure. Oh, Chris Winfrey. Right Waterform Bureau stands on support. Must oh, be late. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that it? Members on House Bill 608, questions? Hearing none, uh, we'll move sure. on to the next uh, legislation, 627. Excellent. I'm a little bit late. I want to ask the CDC question. Okay. okay. Sorry. Members, we'll, we'll go back to 608 and. Uh, Dollars uh, report. I, I wanted to see the red. It's forty-five million dollars. Is that right? Correct. The rationale and the use of it is what? Um, it's our community development project that we're developing a uh, one hundred sixty-one acre parcel, and it's um, to pres um, preserve and for sustainability, actually, for our community. So it's not only it's on Hawaiian homelands, but it's for the in entire community of Hawaii. And you're sure it's got to be that big, though, to start up? I think it's, it's, it's like starting from scratch, right? Um, we already have, um, we're running on a 3.5 um, CIP funding that we got last year. So it's already in the process. The EAA has already been completed, and it's already on its way. should be breaking ground this summer. So this is just adding on to the next future projects of it. Is the CIP continued upon this? No, it was standalone. So it, this is... Um, there's about 22 different projects on the on the parcel. What would happen if you didn't get this 45 million special budget? What would you do? Um, we have other outside funding, but we're using it as uh, more as a leverage upon other um, funding. So we would use it as a need be basis, but not as uh, the sole funding. And how many farmers would you produce? Um, on an average, I would say about 400. There's 265 parcels that could be split down, but they're potentially 400 new farmers. <clears throat> yeah. anyway. Okay, thank you very much. That's it. So moving on to House Bill 627 uh, relating to farm school program, Department of Agriculture. Are you going to stand in support? Uh, yeah, oh, you, you, you've got a detail. Uh, yeah. Please uh, sit down. But. <laughs> And good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committees. Ken Kakesaku, the Department of Agriculture. Um, the department does support the intent of this measure, um, but we do want to say, provided it does not adversely affect the priorities in the administration's budget, um, we also would like to defer to the Department of Education as it looks like there is a position being created in the DOE as well. So we did just want to mention. Thank you very much. The Department of Education, Catherine Matayoshi. Stands on its testimony and support. Yes, support. Thank you. From the University of Hawaii. I don't think uh, Robert uh, Blade Warm is here, but are you? The university stands on his testimony in support of the measure. Thank you. Mason Chalk from the Kauai County Council. In support. Stacy Crivello, another county council member. In support. Simon Russell, Hawaii Farmers Union. In support. Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Farm Bureau stands on written testimony in support. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a great number of uh, testifiers right here. All in support. Any present who would like to testify personally, please come up at that time or stand on your uh, comments. Yes, thank you very much. And we had two full days of council meetings, so I didn't get in all my written comments I would have liked to. But um, this is a program um, that I'm very supportive and our council is very supportive. And it's not just, you know, ag education. Um, and also just in, in terms of 
uh, cohesiveness and building relationships for the students. I also have a degree in education, and um, this has been a very successful program um, in all of the, the schools and allowing the students to not just learn through their eyes and ears, but through other all of their senses and connecting them to the ground and connecting to them where they see something and produce something. It's been, um, it's a really um, great program for the schools and I hope there's a lot of support for this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please come forward. Identify yourself and whether in support. Annie McCoppagall on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Oh, okay. In support of the measure. Um, this uh, valuable program will allow the students to gain access to healthy local foods while stimulating the local economy. And as we all know, healthy habits are more likely to stick when um, developed early. Um, we feel this bill promotes the local production of food, which is the reason why the local food uh, coalition banded together, and we urge you to pass. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you very much. Repeating, we have a great number of testifiers basically in support. So those here who would like to testify in person or just stand on your testimony to advise. Any would like to personally testify? We have about 25 of these all in support also. Now, we do have your written testimony, so the members are available and privy to the testimony. If not, on House Bill 627, members, uh, comments? Uh, should I say questions? I'm looking for a comment. Representative Ward. Is the Department of Agriculture person? Do you have any metrics? How do you know if the program succeeds? What are you going to be looking for? Uh, seeing as it's not our bill, we, 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 it will be something we would look but it's into. But it's going to be to your department, right? Correct. So you guys are the overall responsible part. Correct. Does anyone have metrics who testified before this? How are we going to know that the money invested is going to be successful? Does anyone know this? This is very important. Finance committee is going to ask it. Uh, yes, uh, Councilwoman. Make a few comments. Um, from our my discretionary fund, I have given money for this program to each of the schools in my district, and I've sort of set up what are their objectives and have them report back. Um, and it includes the number of students' involvement and what they've done, and, and different, not just education, it's used in math, it's used in science, it's used not just growing. So trying to get that kind of accountability and also learn from those reports. So I think it's important that there be some kind of um, follow-up and reporting and a sense of um, what's gone well and what hasn't. So I just think making people more accountable is always a yes, good way to start. It would be good to add because the broad uh, goals are to improve student health, enrich the food system. I mean, it's pretty yeah. And let broad. me just say that, say, in, in my district, they are doing um, every Wednesday when they're doing it, there's a student, they come out and they sell. Um, and so they sort of learn all the different levels, and we're trying to make it so some of the, um, like even at, um, that they're using their own produce in the school, um, and just really sort of all of the different links from where you accede to growing and your health. And um, I find it's the students they're saying, what are you eating those Fritos for? You know, we can't do that. And they're really learning a lot about nutrition in a way that, um, is enjoyable. I just so. encourage you to get some metrics so you can see you successful. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Congressperson. Any other questions? If not, uh, we'll move on to the next on the agenda, House Bill 823, relating to agricultural <coughs> theft. Department of Agriculture. Morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee, Ken Kakisako, Department of Agriculture. We are in support of the bill, and we just ask if it does move forward that the Attorney General's office also be included as part of the discussion. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. From the Hawaii County Prosecuting Office, Prosecutor uh, Mitch Roth, our representative thereof, in support. Hawaii Farm Bureau, Chris Manfrey. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, Chair. Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Um, I'd like to stand on written, but this is one of our top priorities. I'd like to uh, underscore this measure. Um, agricultural theft is a tremendous problem for farmers and ranchers. They invest in the crop, time, money, sweat, toil, only to see someone else harvest it for them. Um, there's laws on the books, and enforcement has been lacking because uh, law enforcement personnel is typically uh, places a higher priority on uh, public health and safety. And this leaves the farmer and the rancher uh, out in the cold. And we'd like to demonstrate through this pilot project in Hawaii County that a dedicated enforcement officer in the prosecutor's office working with farmers, ranchers, the community, the prosecutor, and the Department of Ag to help stem the tide of agricultural crimes uh, is something that's overdue. Uh, we appreciate your support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ellen Gottlieb, Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, in support. From the Hawaii Cro Crop Improvement Association, Bennett Musa Lucha. Bennett. Thank you again, Bennett. Do we have any late <laughs> testimonies coming in? None. Any others who would like to testify? Please. Thank you. Good morning, Chair morning. Vice Chair Onishi, members of the panel. My name is Boyd Sakai. I'm the Deputy Chief Special Agent with the Attorney General's Investigations Division. I'm here to support this measure. Uh, we have agents in our office working side by side with the Department of Agriculture on other issues relating to Big Island coffee. Uh, in this case, we would assist them with the uh, theft of livestock and agricultural products. So we are in support of this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Um, Margaret Willie, again, County Council, <laughs> County of Hawaii. And this is something that also the council and myself have worked with Mitch Roth, um, that it is a serious problem. And there's really been no one in the prosecutor's office sort of um, focused on this and equipped to handle this. It's a whole different level of crime. So urge your support. Thank you very much, Council Member. Any others? No late testimony. Okay, members, <laughs> questions? If not, thank you very much. Chair, I, have my hand. I, I didn't want to speak out. I'm the Do only you have a question? <laughs> I have a question? Call on the person. Mr. Manfred, you said this was one of your key, very important issues. Could you give me the cost that it's taking a toll on a farmer's of you? What's an estimation of how much farmers are losing by that? <laughs> Well, it depends on the incident, but it's uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars okay, every year. 200,000 in the bill. At least should be at least 200,000 dollars of that. So it's hundreds of thousands that they're losing. Primarily, which crop? It's coffee. It's livestock. It's avocados. It's fruit crops. Um, I don't think anything is exempted. It's it's equipment. It's um, trespassing, <laughs> cutting of fences, stealing of water lines, and one thing. Uh, uh, Representative, uh, with all due respect, farmers and ranchers are taxpayers as well, and they um, are also entitled to uh, the benefits of law enforcement. I just didn't know the, the, the diamonds. I didn't know the cattle was still I mean, we have farmers that that work all year to produce a crop, and they're just getting ready to harvest, and they wake up one morning, they go to their farm, and it's picked clean. I mean, it's devastating. Thank you. Thank you. Questions if not, moving on. House Bill 849, Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, House of Representatives Cynthia Thielen. In opposition. Council Member Margaret Wiley, I saw. <coughs> Um, okay, County of Hawaii, I think, um, uh, opposed this bill, and I think, let me just say what the problem examples, for example, on our island, and passing a bill um, that addresses property, protecting private property, that of um, the non-geo, 
MO farmers, those who are conventional or organic. And looking at that problem, how do we address that so that it's not all, um, if you allow unlimited GMO farming, um, any of the corresponding crops will be contaminated. So it, the federal government hasn't done anything about this. There's been one bill in 2007. Um, it did not pass, and it, again, there was something in 2009 doesn't pass. The state hasn't done anything about it, and basically, we look around at Kauai and Latin America and what's going on there, and we don't want to see that. So we have a problem. You know, there is a problem that hasn't been addressed, and the people come to us on the local level and say, help us, and we try to balance. We had on that bill, 13 days of hearings, 600 people attended the first day, thousands of pages of um, written testimony. Um, I drafted that and tried to balance it, exempting papaya, exempting grandfathering in existing GMO. So trying to hit a balance. Um, I think really this comes down to a, you know, the state, as we see it, the state saying, we're not doing anything about this, but we don't want you to do anything. Um, and so it's really, um, I, I guess I'm asking for respect. I see that you all are doing a lot on pesticides. I appreciate that. You're trying to address those issues. I defer to that. But where you're not doing something, the federal government isn't doing something, the state government isn't doing something, allow the counties to have some sense of um, ability and authority over things that really have to do with property and land use, which is traditionally a local issue. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, this is another one that we have a lot of testimony, uh, providing comments in support, in opposition. Uh, any president would like to testify? Please. Good morning, <clears throat> Chairman, uh, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Inga Gibson, Hawaii State Director, Humane Society of the United States. And I just had a few comments, Chair. Um, I uh, obviously uh, uh, work closely with uh, the Farm Bureau, the Department of Agriculture, the Cattlemen's Association, and, and we believe that the intent of this measure is not to limit um, our ability to work with the counties when it comes to animal welfare issues. However, uh, we are a bit concerned because um, the definition, or there is no definition really of agriculture practices. We have seen in other states um, similar legislation used to prevent uh, the application or the strengthening of animal protection law, specifically as it relates to farm animals and equine animals. And given that this applies to farming and ranching, there is a probability that this could prevent counties from uh, enacting other ordinances as it relates to those particular animals. So again, um, we, we don't believe that the intent is to limit the county's authority, but again, the reality, given that agriculture agricultural practices is, is not defined. Um, also, there are, are many unique things about each county, as you know. Um, uh, thankfully, Hawaii does not have any um, confined animal feeding operations. We don't have any intensive um, animal operations that you'll see a lot on the mainland. We want Hawaii to be a model of humane and sustainable agriculture and farming. And we just want it to be clear that the intent, again, of this legislation isn't uh, to limit the protections that are currently afforded and may need to be further afforded to farm animals and equine animals at the county level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Aloha, welcome back to the Capitol. Aloha. I did submit testimony uh, strongly opposing this measure, and if you don't have it, I'll, I'll provide additional copies. My name is Gary yeah, Hooser. We're in receipt of your testimony. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and good morning, uh, representatives. Uh, my name is Gary Hooser. I presently serve on the Kauai County Council. I'm here today testifying as an individual council member in strong opposition to House Bill 849 relating to agriculture. Uh, the, the main thought I want to leave with you is the laws and protections afforded by the state and the federal government should represent a floor, not a ceiling of protections. That should be the state regulation, it should be the, the, the floor. And if the counties would like to have increased protections, then the counties should be able to do that. Just as the state could have increased protections over federal regulations in most cases. Uh, neither the state nor the federal government is truly aware of what happens on the ground 
within each county and to strip away the county authority to protect its own citizens is, in my opinion, unconscionable. Uh, if this is passed into law, local communities, local governments will not have the authority to protect the health of their citizens or their natural environment against the actions or inactions of any agricultural operations. Our authority will be limited to calling the appropriate state or federal agency, regardless if anyone answers the phone, regardless if anyone responds affirmatively or not. And if there are no state laws or no federal laws governing that dangerous activity, the county would be virtually powerless to, to do anything at all. And if the state and the, and the legislature is really honest about the state's current ability to enforce and protect its citizens, the track record will show that it's woefully inadequate. It is public record that it takes the Department of Agriculture years, I'm not exaggerating, years to investigate and close out cases of pesticide drift and contamination. There's a multi-year backlog of these investigations and unresolved inspections, and it's also public record that this is woefully underfunded and in many positions are left vacant for the years. The companies are fond to say they are highly regulated, and this is flat out not true. Federal agencies are rarely ever on the ground conducting inspections, and the same goes for state agencies. Large companies who apply restricted use pesticides, many of which are banned in other countries, and I have the documentation, the source documents to support every single thing I'm saying here today. They're, they're applying chemicals 260 days a year, and they're inspected by the state maybe twice, maybe eight times at the most per year. I've attached a document that has electronic links to all the source documents. Real quickly, in, in summary, the, the, the bill talks in its prelude that this need for this is about newcomers to the island. And with all due respect, this is flat out not true, not in Kauai County. Uh, the, the citizens of Waimea, it's a plantation town, local citizens, multi-generational citizens, are suing DuPont Pioneer for, the, for, for their agricultural activity. And the state has done nothing to help them, the federal government has done nothing to help them, and the county of Kauai has stepped up to try. And, and that's what this is all about. The, the laws passed in Kauai County are because there is no state law. The state law that was passed here two years ago requiring a certain amount of disclosure still has not been implemented by the Department of Ag. The, the, the quote from the, from the Constitution saying that we shall conserve and protect agricultural lands, I support that. The Constitution also says that the state and all its political subdivisions shall conserve and protect environmental resources, land, water. Again, the laws and protections afforded by the state and federal government should represent a floor, not a ceiling. In conclusion, I ask that this committee hold House Bill 849 and please do not support stripping away the authority of the county governments to protect their citizens. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any others present? Please step forward. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the chance to testify here. My name is Jan Pappas, and I did submit testimony, although it may have been Thank you. late. Okay. And I'm just here as an individual. I don't represent any... I'm, I'm concerned about health and safety for the people of Hawaii and my family. Um, I am in opposition to Bill uh, 8, HB uh, 849. Um, as Americans and residents of Hawaii, we expect to be reasonably protected from possible dangers posed by businesses, farms, and government operations. Activities such as pesticide application, use of toxic, toxic chemicals, and possible <coughs> water, soil, or air contamination occur during, quote, modern farming. At the very least, we deserve to, the right to know when these activities are occurring near our homes, schools, hospitals, and businesses so that we can protect, adequately protect our families. But many Hawaii citizens feel that today we are not adequately protected from these dangers despite federal state law and state laws or the lack of them. Uh, and we are not always told the truth about the dangers that we face. And companies and farms continue to operate with impunity despite public outcries uh, about the dangers that they pose to the community. I found a website called Beyond Pesticides. And on that, there's a list of uh, 33, they, they have a list of 33 um, states and, and 400 school districts that have pesticide policies across the United States. I printed it out. It's on, uh, 
recycled paper, so it's <laughs> it's single sided. But this is the list of um, school districts across the United States that do have individual policies for pesticides and uh, uh, for an integrated pest management, which is a way to avoid the use of pesticides entirely. So those are separate districts deciding what they want to do about pesticides in their area. Um, okay, Hawaii should not relinquish county governance unless and until we are assured that we and our families can be kept safe by state and Your federal. time is up. Could you okay. please summarize? Yeah, I will. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, due to a lack of appropriate state and federal regulations at this time, I don't think we have that assurance. So um, for this reason, I oppose Bill 849, and I hope that you will do the same. Thank you very much. Other testifiers? We'll take, we'll take you, followed up by you. You may come here and say one, two, two, and three, okay? Aloha Chair, Vice Chair. I flew here from Maui this morning. My name is Kate Griffiths, and I'm the publisher of the Maui Mama. This is a resource guide for mothers on Maui. I also have an honors degree from the London School of Economics and Political Science. I understand economics, I understand politics, and I understand sustainability. The Maui Mama gives mothers a voice. Last year, I gave voice to a mother who contacted me. She had a baby, gave birth to a baby with gastrocytosis. This is when your intestines are outside your body. This is a known side effect to atrazine, a chemical used heavily in farming here on the island. It also gave voice to another mother who is here, who was fundraising as she had been diagnosed. She's going to give birth to a baby with gastrocytosis and needed to um, raise funds for travel and medical expenses. It gave voice to a mom who contacted me who tested her drinking water for glyphosate. Results were positive. It also gave voice to a mother who had children who had glyphosate in their urine in Kihei. I tested my children in Haiku. They are not positive for glyphosate. It also gave voice to a mom who went into her room in the middle of the night and it was filled with cane burning um, smoke. And she rushed her kid to the hospital who was in the ER. It also gave voice to the supervisor of WIC, Women, Infants and Children, who wrote an article about pesticide exposure in children. They are very concerned with the patterns they are seeing here on the island. Maybe if the county had more to say um, in the past, I live in Haiku. It is former pineapple land. My soil is contaminated and there's black plastic protruding through the grass and tree roots. So let's learn from the past. I believe decision of land use that affects our community members, our water, our land, our babies, our children, should be governed at um, a local level and not driven by an industry that is profit driven. This bill would take away my community's voice. It would also be a big slap in the face for Maui County. I'm sure you all are very aware we passed. We worked really hard on educating and forming our community. We voted and won and passed the GMO moratorium requesting, all we were requesting was an environmental impact assessment on Please, ag factors. So, so in conclusion, I oppose the county's amendment. <laughs> they do not want to, cannot enact laws, ordinance, or resolutions to limit the rights of farmers and ranchers. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. I don't want. Okay. I'm Winnie He from Mililani. Um, Chair Suji, Vice Chair Onishi, and committee members, since almost all of you except two representatives from Kauai signed on as introducers uh, of this bill, I kind of think, well, you're going to pass it. But um, I'm here to try to convince you to kill this bill. Um, it's embarrassingly poorly written to the point of being farcical. Uh, you say in the last several decades, uh, urban encroachment and new neighbors complaining. Tell that to Walter Ritty that his clan is encroaching on Monsanto. <laughs> on Molokai. That's ridiculous. And then if you want to eat pork, you have to tolerate the smell. Um, I don't think the people on Kauai next to Syngenta test fields are complaining about the smell. It's breathing in who knows what. They're only asking um, the, the Syngenta to reveal the amount and what kinds of chemicals they're using. So it, it, this is not going to do it. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's not about the smell. It's about the poisons. 
Um, I, I do want to thank you for telling me about Article 9, Section 3, Hawaii State Constitution, that the state shall conserve and protect agricultural lands, um, self-sufficiency. Um, I'm going to use this to try to get the land to overturn the... Um, the rezoning of Ho'opili and Core Ridge. If, if the Constitution says to uh, preserve agricultural lands, why are we doing that? But anyway, um, that's off topic. And, and, and I just want to tell you that um, you, you really need to rewrite this bill. It's, it's so poorly written. Uh, it, it, your amendment talks about uh, a nuisance, farming operations, a nuisance. People are not talking about a nuisance. They're talking about their health. And if the state won't protect the health of the people, then the county should. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aloha. My name is Felicia Cowden. I am from Kauai. I'm here. I represent... A number of, I'm a part of a number of different organizations, many of which are farm-related. Regenerations Botanical Garden, Kauai Farmers Union, that's part of Hawaii Farmers Union United, and a number of other projects that we have. I live on the northeast side, and we have a lot of organic farms, and that is part of what defines our whole community and where we're going with it. The challenge for me with this preemption clause in the Right to Farm Bill, adding such that the counties cannot control agriculture is very problematic. The majority of the population is in Oahu. It's urban. The majority, subsequently, of the representatives are from Oahu, an urban area. The neighbor islands, the counties, represent rural areas. And we need the, our rural areas to be able to have a voice in how we manage our rural communities and to know the subtleties of which area is focused in what type of farming and another is out of the purview for the most part of the larger community in the legislature here. And we have seen on each island so much action from the counties and that's not the fault of the county council, it's the people not feeling represented by the legislature and feeling abandoned. And so it's a lot of work to get up and go out and scream and camp in the rain and everything. It's not recreational for anyone. No one likes doing that. It's been very divisive in our community. And we, the, the industry has been able to keep kicking it back to the state. The state is underfunded, not able to send their people out. The Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health came out to the council, I think, March 2014, and they owned, when they did that snapshot, that never before has the water been tested, and 100% of the streams across the state showed um, pesticide use in there. Now, it's not just these companies, but it's not being looked at. The state isn't looking after it. Time's Let up. the Please people help. Thank you. Thank I, you very I, much. Um, I, I want you to take that preemption amendment out. Yeah, if there's the fires. If not, members, uh, questions? Oh, excuse me. Please. Aloha, uh, Representative Suji and Agriculture Committee reps. My name is Nomi Carmona. I'm the lobbyist for Babes Against Biotech, and I'm here representing our 39,000 members in opposition to the Right to Farm Bill. Um, I'm a little concerned and upset that it's back up again. I thought that the community made itself really clear last year. The further you remove the policy making from the ground level, the more disenfranchised the actual constituents become when they feel like their voice matter. And I think it would be one thing if the regulations that all these counties are seeking right now that all these communities have fought so hard for uh, were taken care of at the state level, but it's been years that constituents have been coming before the, this committee to ask for better protection, and they're not getting it from the state level. So I think, um, just like Councilman Hoosier said, the state is supposed to be a floor and not a ceiling. Like, how would you feel if the federal government took away your state powers to regulate agriculture and pesticides? Because that's what you're doing to the county level. And the different levels of government are supposed to balance each other, check and balance each other. So I think um, 
I have lived in these different communities in these different counties. I have lived in all of your districts to help the communities on your islands pass legislation at the county level um, to regulate agriculture and pesticides. They are uniquely different. Each council is different. Each governing body is different. Each community is different. And while we want a lot of the same things, if we lose our home rule right to specify what are we doing? What are, what are we even having uh, this form of government for? What's the point of the county council if they're not able to enact ordinances which protect citizens' life and health by regulating pesticides, which we know even on the label are linked to health problems, even admittedly? So I would ask that this be the last year that you try to take away our county home rule and that you kill this bill because... We're not going to stop asking for our rights and demanding them. And if we didn't already have home rule, then you wouldn't keep trying to take it away. So I ask you support the people and oppose home, uh, oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Chris, I'm sorry you, you were early on the uh, list. Mr. Manfredi. Thank you, Chair. Committee, Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, this is the Ag Committee. This is an agricultural bill. Um, I'd like to speak for the farmers and ranchers. Um, Hawaii Farm Bureau supports all forms of agriculture. We have, we have members that practice organically. We have members that practice conventionally. We have members that practice biotechnology and everything in between. And we're of the mind that we need all of it to be successful. We're a very remote, remote state. We have weeds, pests, disease imported to our state by airplanes. Um, we need all the tools necessary to be able to produce a safe, healthy, and competitive crop. Speaking to competitiveness, we are often placed at a disadvantage because of the high cost of inputs, uh, high cost of labor. And if we're going to be competitive on the store shelves, we need to be able to keep up with weeds, pests, and disease. <coughs> now, the federal government and the state budget allocates tremendous amount of resources to regulate in this area. The counties have no demonstrated a, uh, capacity to regulate in this area. And for counties to regulate um, effectively, aside from just banning, um, you're talking about a whole different and costly and redundant regulatory regime. Farmers need certainty. Farmers need a level playing field. We're trying to seek coexistence. We have many examples of coexistence in the state. I don't want to debate pesticide use. I don't want to debate biotechnology in the context of this measure. But farmers need a level playing field. We plan crops years in advance. Our markets are laid out years in advance. Our yields are projected years in advance. We're often throwing curveball, curveballs with weather, invasive species, changing climate, drought, theft. The least we can do is provide some stability in the regulatory regimes. And again, the counties have not demonstrated any capacity to regulate in this area other than just ban. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, those who are present, uh, you know, we have a long day to go yet, and uh, we have about eight other uh, bills to be heard. So those of you who don't mind, uh, you know, you may stand on your testimony, but thank you for your presence. Please. Aloha. My name is Hoku Kabibi. I'm from the island of Kauai. I flew in this morning um, to express that we really, at the county level, would like to keep home rule. So if you could please, I flew all the way here. Um, I've been part of community organizations on the island of Kauai to pass bills, um, and we have done that because, like Felicia said, the state level just hasn't cut it for us. We're in a desperation level. I have an 11-year-old child. She's in a school that is close to um, chemical testing fields, and it's become kind of a desperate situation on Kauai. You know, that's how we feel, and and... We, as Kauai people, we know what's going on on the island. We know what's going through the doors in the state here and seeing the same players coming up and blocking the same things. And 
And we're just asking for home rule to stay where home rule is at. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any others? Aloha. 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 My name is Clayton Kubo. Waimea Kawai, yeah? Okay. If this is the right to farm, just dust in Waimea Town. A sprayer right here. Another spray over here. If they have the right to poison the air that I breed, that my son breed also, that my mom, my neighbors breed, I don't think they have a right to do that. If I did that, I think I would be arrested already. But here. Go on. You have a so-called dust screen underneath there, the tree line. The dust is like, what is that? Estimated like 200 feet in the air, right to farm. Yeah, so I'm right to farm. And I, I guess I'll be seeing you later, Mr. Uh, Representative Suji. But thank you guys very thank much. You. Thank you. Any others? Chair, Vice Chair, esteemed members of the committee, my name's Summer Star. Uh, I'm coming from the island of Maui. I sit uh, testifying as a private citizen, but also as a member of the Hawaii Farm Bureau, Hawaii Farmers Union, and a former board member and secretary of the Hawaii Organic Farmers Association. And I would urge you to oppose this bill. And uh, I'll make a quick comment that I would just like to remind you that what happens on the other islands outside of Honolulu, especially in our agricultural communities, is very unique. It's um, something that we should be able to determine ourselves based on the information, expertise, and experience that we have there in our communities. Thank you very much for hearing this bill. Thank you very much. Any others? If not, members, questions? Representative Ward. If not, forever hold your peace. <laughs> I, 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 I yield to whoever wants to go. Thank you. I accept your yield. <laughs> Members, if not, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Question Councilwoman Willie. Yeah. Okay, County of Hawaii passed an ordinance mm -hmm. uh, regarding a regarding GMOs, <clears throat> and it was challenged in court. And what was the decision by the court? The court said that there was a comprehensive statutory scheme related to the same subject matter that um, implicitly uh, showed the intent that the state has uh, the authority with regard to the agricultural matters. Okay, thank you very much. And so we're opposing call that. Can I call uh, Councilman Hoosier? And let me, can I Thank comment? Thank you. Thank you very much. We're opposing that and appealing that Thank you. wrong ruling. Councilman Hoosier, uh, County of Kauai passed the pesticide ordinance that was challenged in court. Yes. And what was the outcome of that challenge in court? The court ruled that the uh, state had... Uh, how do you say, meant to be the overall regulator of pesticides and agriculture. But we, we are appealing that decision, okay. and Thank the state you. has not uh, regulated in the areas that we did. The, the areas of pesticide okay. uh, Thank you very much. disclosure and buffer zones yeah. are not covered by state law right now. So that's an unsettled uh, question, I think, but right the now. state has the right regarding the, the laws... Uh, in regards to pesticide. Am I, I correct? I that think, was a ruling. I think this committee would not be hearing this measure if this legislative body felt that this counties did not have authority to regulate right now. What you're having before is an attempt to take away power that we say we have. And so you're trying to take that power away. We say we have it. The judge has ruled his thing. But the, the legislature clearly has not concluded that issue. Otherwise, you wouldn't be having this bill before you. We're trying to conclude that, and we're basing it upon decisions made by the court in who has jurisdiction. So thank you very much. Okay, they did not rule in the sure. state thank constitutional matter. 
Thank you very much, Councilman. Any other questions? I'd be happy to address the sure. issue of the state, county's ability to regulate. That was the issue. No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions, Vice Chair? No. no. Members, if not, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll move on to the next on the uh, agenda. Uh, House Bill 850, and uh, this relates to agricultural extension services. First on the list, uh, Mr. Gottlieb, Department of Agriculture. Support, thank you. University of Hawaii. Good Aloha. morning again, Chair. Aloha, Vice Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ken Grace. I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And the university is, uh, is pleased to testify in strong support of this measure, uh, so long as it does not adversely impact the budget request of the University of Hawaii Board of Regents. Uh, Cooperative Extension Service is one of the three uh, missions of a public land grant university. That's instruction, research, and extension. And extension is just what it says, extending the results of research to the community. Uh, many of the people in this room know us by our cooperative extension service uh, more than any other function of the university. Uh, Hawaii is rather unique among all the states uh, in choosing to support agricultural research and extension through a single budget line to the University of Hawaii. Uh, every other state actually recognizes that as being a rather unique service and chooses to support it in a different fashion uh, through some form of a separate budget line. Uh, that places the extension service basically as part of the general university budget. Uh, that's a difficult position in days of uh, cutbacks. Uh, and times when the budget models that are currently on the table for the university uh, are really based on tuition numbers, tuition, tuition revenue, student numbers, and classrooms. Uh, it makes it difficult to replace extension positions that are lost through normal attrition. Uh, as a result, the Cooperative Extension Service has actually decreased by 28% in the past six years, by over 40% in the past 20 years. Uh, that's normal but we haven't been in a position to replace those lost positions. Uh, this bill would provide two years of funding, temporary funding, for two agents in every county. So it would have an immediate increase in our manpower. Uh, the needs identified in the bill are needs that have been broadly expressed. Uh, there are a lot of needs, so we're certainly not, uh, not constricted by those or bound to them, but they are needs. Uh, two years of funding is temporary funding, but it fills an immediate gap. And it also allows the university the time to build cooperative extension into the budget models that are currently being heavily discussed, both by this body and on campus. Uh, and to reinstill these as permanent positions in the system. I should stress that extension agents are faculty positions with the University of Hawaii. So that is uh, an important part of, uh, of what we do. So I thank you very much. And uh, again, the university strongly supports the major. Thank, thank you me. very much. Farm Bureau, please. None? OK, in support. Senator, testimony, strong support. Chair Suji. Thank you very much. Uh, Maui County Farm Bureau. Support. Uh, Hawaii Farmers Union United. Simon Russell. In support. Three Roads Farm, in support. Uh, John Cross, Hawaii Macadamia Nut Association, in support. Wayne Katayama, Kauai Coffee Company, in support. Council Member uh, Crivello, in support. And we have a whole number of uh, very interested individuals uh, signed up for uh, testifying. We, all in all, we have about 52 uh, signees basically in support uh any others here today? please i didn't realize this bill was on on today but 
as a recent graduate of the Master Gardener program, which is sponsored by uh, CTAR, I, you know, I just wanted to say how important I think this is to the community. Um, being a graduate now, we're expected to do volunteer hours at the gardens, and yesterday I happened to be on the helpline um, at the Urban Garden Center here on Oahu, and they're those sa same on all the islands, so um, we get call after call, walk-in after walk-in for information uh, about gardening, about farming. Uh, I think there's a resurgence in the last few years on this. And um, we have limited volunteers. We turn out, I think, uh, I would say 30 to 40 new master gardeners every year. That doesn't mean you're truly a master. You're learning um, for the next five years before you become a, a true master gardener. Um, so, you know, we need, uh, I would say that, you know, right, our, our classroom was packed. There were 40, more than 40 people uh, becoming master gardeners. I, I do see the need for more support uh, from the extension office to the community because people are hungry for this information and um, I think passing this bill would be one way of uh, starting to move us in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Uh, uh, we have about uh, eight uh, late testimonies here, all basically in support, and none of them uh, uh, plan to be present. Any other testifiers? Members, questions? Jeff. Please. If I may. Uh, Mr. Grace, please. Uh, the great contributions of uh, the Extension Service are, are beyond recognition given that American agriculture was basically built on what you guys did. Yes. What I found surprising is mm -hmm. that CITAR just sent out its annual report in yes. focus, which makes me ask the question that I'm sure the Finance Committee would ask. Sure. The $700,000, mm -hmm. is it going to go for agricultural extension? Because in your, f mm -hmm. in your report, it says only half of your job mm -hmm. has been ag extension. The other half is like lifestyle choices, caring for aging parents, financial management non-ag-based thing. So yes. is there mission creep in this money also? Because it no. looks like there's mission creep in the extension service. No. Actually, uh, uh, Representative Ward, the, the, uh, our extension service has always been based in those areas. Uh, in part, this goes back to, uh, to the inclusion of home economics uh, with agriculture back in the turn of the century and in, in, the, in the 19th century. Uh, and as that's modernized, uh, we work with youth. Uh, the 4-H program is an excellent example of a program that goes in multiple directions, uh, well known for the livestock aspect, but equally important for space exploration and many other aspects of youth education. Uh, so there's no mission creep here. It's, it's basically shoring things up. Uh, the, uh, it's my uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, I apologize for that. No, I apologize. It's, because uh, I did, but if you yeah. go into... Uh, rising seas and things like right. elder care that yes. gets a little bit, I mean then yeah. you're overlapping with the human services department of health well uh, unless again, you don't well again we don't uh, they they're an action agency we we're, we're a uh, an extension outreach and education agency so uh, we're trying to help people help themselves if you will or make them aware of the services that are available for them uh, we also assess those services uh, for the state in many cases, uh, the impact that they're having. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very, extension is a, in the Cooperative Extension Service, it really does have a broad mission across the United States. Uh, that's very true. A strong component has always been the agricultural section. Uh, this is the mm -hmm. Agricultural Committee, and that is the, uh, the shortfalls that we're focused on. But I actually can't tell you, uh, it, well, I will tell you. In the, in the past week, I, I've had a number of phone calls and, and uh, discussions with parts of, our, of the Extension Service that deal with the issues you're talking about right now, uh, saying, hey, you know, we, we also have lost a, a position here. Is it possible to strengthen that? And the answer is yes. I mean, everything we bring in frees up more time on the part of other people to do what they're supposed to do. So, so we're trying to shore it all up. Uh, but yes, we focused on one aspect that we're getting a lot of heat on right now, uh, a lot of demand for the services, as our testifier a moment ago expressed. So that, that's where we are. Uh, 
my so question does not lessen my admiration for all that you've done. So don't, <laughs> don't misinterpret me. I but, don't at all. And if your model is more you. effective than DHS, maybe they should adopt or subcontract with you guys. <laughs> your thing. You know, we have some contracts with them, but thank you. I appreciate the sentiment. Thank, yeah. you. thank you, Chair. Any other questions, uh, members of the committee? If not, we'll move on to our uh, next bill on the agenda, HB 853, relating to agriculture, uh, establishes the K-12 Agricultural Workforce Development Program. First, Department of Agriculture. Department stands on this morning support. Thank you. Again, University of Hawaii. University stands on his testimony in support. Mr. Thank you. DLIR, Elaine. Hi. Oh, sorry. Right. Aloha, how are you? Uh, a little weary because I'm now the acting director oh, <laughs> for 60 days. <laughs> but Please proceed. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Chair Tsuji, uh, Vice Chair Onishi, and members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony, but I just wanted to explain that we already have a board that's working on this, and Chris is going to give more information on this. Chris is part of that board, and on that board we have different um, departments, including CTAR, including DOE, including agriculture, and we have a farmer on a committee too. So we'll be working together with them, and this is an initiative that came out of that board. And um, I guess, Chris, you can explain more. OK, thank you very much. Hawaii Cattlemen's uh, Council, Helen Gottlieb, Hawaii uh, Farm Bureau. Chris. Thank you, Chair. This, uh, you. this measure is the result of several years of work uh, with Department of Ag and Department of Labor and Industrial Relations who did a series of uh, listening sessions and facilitated meetings across the state with farmers and ranchers and educators. Um, it's common knowledge that the average age of a farmer rancher in Hawaii is 60 years old and if we want to address food security sustainability for the future we have to start uh, incentivizing not just students but uh, teachers and administrators to consider careers in agriculture through education. This bill would create a pipeline by which uh, young people can be exposed to the various um, educational value and career choices in agriculture and essentially markets um, existing curriculums to school administrators and educators to attract students into careers in agriculture. We appreciate your strong support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Simon Russell, Hawaii Farmers United, in support. Robert uh, Hirokawa, Hawaii Primary Care Association, in support. Vinet uh, Musalucha, excuse me, Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, in support. Our final written testimony here, uh, David Puertes, uh, in support. Any others here that would like to provide testimony? Oh, in support. Department of Education. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got some late testimony here. One, three of these in all in the, uh, support including a late testimony from the Department of Education, the same one, you're representing uh, Catherine Matayoshi. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any others? If not, uh, moving on for questions. None? Uh, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to... Okay. HB 870, and uh, this relates to uh, food, the issuance of general obligation bonds, and uh, relates to food innovation with the 
Kapilani Community College. We'd like to call on Department of Agriculture. Robert Scazzo's testimony in support. In support. Thank you, University of Hawaii. The University of Hawaii stands on its testimony in support. Thank you, Dr. Warden. Uh, okay, we've got uh, about 20 individuals here. Any present that would like to make uh, uh, provide testimony on House Bill 870. What we have here in front of us are uh, all in support. We've got some late testimony. Testimony uh, submitted uh, will not be testifying in person, but all in support. No testifiers, uh, except for from what we've heard, uh, members of the committee. Um, questions? None? Okay, that was on House Bill 870. Uh, moving on, House Bill 995. It calls for the appropriation of an unspecified amount to the uh, future farmers <coughs> of uh, America. <laughs> Department of Agriculture. Department of Agriculture. Okay, thank you. <laughs> University of Hawaii. Please. Thank you. Chair, Vice Chair, members. Uh, again, my name is Ken Grace. I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Tropical Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, the University of Hawaii does support the bill, uh, but we do request an amendment. Uh, we defer to Department of Education on the future farmers component of the bill. Uh, they, uh, they do an excellent job with that, and that's a valuable youth education program. 4-H is also valuable, and the 4-H's stand for Head, Hearts, Hands, and Health. Uh, it's a strong youth education program. As we mentioned uh, in previous testimony, very active in livestock and crop education with young people. Also very in farming in general and growing plants. Also very active in many other aspects of uh, youth education, food and nutrition, clothing, health, safety, the environment, etc. Uh, at present, the 4-H program has been going through some throes of reorganization. Uh, tax, certain tax changes have necessitated that. Uh, and we've been working closely with the volunteers, which are a very important part of 4-H, the volunteer clubs and the 4-H Foundation. Uh, so at this particular time, we would like to request the amendment uh, that it would really be more appropriate for any funding in the bill uh, to be designated for 4-H to actually be uh, presented in the form of a grant to the 4-H Foundation, which is the primary funding body for the very large volunteer organization. I thank you very much. Okay. Please answer any questions. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on, Animal Rights Hawaii. <clears throat> Animal Rights Hawaii, in opposition. Ellen Gottlieb, Hawaii Cattlemen's uh, Council, in support. Hawaii Farm Bureau, Mr. Manfredi. Stand in support, uh, also support the amendments forwarded by University of Hawaii. You are alluding to the comment about in the form of a grant? A grant to the foundation, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hawaii Primary Care, Robert uh, Hirokawa. Uh, from Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, Renette Misalucha, in support. And finally, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Michelle Galimba in support, and we have uh, 
Uh, we have four late written testimonies in support. Any others uh, present who would like to provide testimony? If not, members. So, I just want to make sure uh, local food coalition. Um, I hope you received our, sorry, our late no testimony, Annie McCapagall, on behalf of the local food coalition. And um, we strongly support the measure. And oh. um, just want to point out that Hawaii's farmers, um, the average age is 60, and um, we'd like to encourage younger farmers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, questions? Is that your arm, Rep. Ward? It's my arm, sir. <laughs> Mr. Grace, would you grace us with your presence again? Uh, generally, when a, a bill has a blank pro, uh, appropriation, it's either too little or too much to mention. Could you mm. take a guess at where it is between those perhaps two extremes? How much money should go into here? You said there's a great okay. purpose. How much? What's the price tag? Uh, well, I hedge a little. Difficult for me to say. Currently, as I mentioned, the bill appropriates funds to the University of Hawaii for the program, and we strongly recommend that actually that be changed to a grant to the 4-H Foundation rather than appropriation to the university. Uh, the foundation does need additional infrastructure at this time due to the tax changes that have come in and the uh, management responsibilities they're taking on. Uh, this body has previously... Uh, previously considered or entertained appropriations in the amount of around a hundred thousand dollars as being an appropriate amount actually it's between 75 and a hundred I, I frankly I would think that an appropriation of 75 in the form of a grant to the foundation 75,000 uh, would really assist them this year but thank you, thank you. I just wanted to get to my opinion Very okay thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yes, um, vice chair yeah. um, I had a question follow-up the extension service provides mm -hmm. for uh, extension agents to assist with 4-H? Very true, yes. How many extension agents? Uh, with Specifically with 4-H at this right. time? We try to have one on every island. We don't quite have that now, so about three at this time. Okay. So the funding that's being put to 4-H, well, mm -hmm. the funding for the extension agents, where does that funding come from? The University of Hawaii, their their faculty with okay. the university. I, if I so, could clarify, well, okay. sorry. No. So, I, so the university is committed to continued funding for 4-H extension agents. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we have just lost a 4-H agent on uh, on Maui and are in the process of requesting that position from the university. Uh, we're also initiating a search for a coordinator for our volunteer activities with a strong emphasis on coordinating the 4-H program. So okay. we are committed to, to that. So programs by, you, uh, by CTAR mm -hmm. in regards to 4-H, yeah. coordinated through their extension agents, yes. how is that funded? Uh, basically through grants that the, uh, that, that the agents are able to obtain. Uh, there is including, I believe, a USDA funding that supports 4-H that does come to the university, so that supports programming. Uh, and additionally, a heavy component from the fundraising by the foundation and by the time given by the volunteers. So kind of a it's, it's private, it's public-private yeah, partnership. So yeah. this appropriation, yeah. wouldn't it be useful for CTAR to be mm -hmm. able to use this appropriation to help support the activities of your extension agents? Absolutely. Versus I'll, giving this to the foundation? It, it would be useful either way. It's a matter of timing, Vice Chair. Uh, at this particular time, we feel that the, that the, the, uh, uh, the member volunteer groups and the foundation are perhaps more in need of that immediate institutional support. Uh, we always want support, however, we're really focused at this time and in this session in increasing our infrastructure for the entire program rather than for a specific component of it. And 4-H is part of our extension program. Uh, if Bill 850 is successful, that will also help to shore up the 4-H program from the university standpoint. So that's our focus. So do you know if a 
uh, grant and aid request has been mm -hmm. made to the legislature from the foundation? I apologize, but I do not know. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Other questions, members? If not, uh, thank you very much. And uh, moving on to the next uh, uh, House Bill 1039, making an appropriation for the local and immigrant farmer education program. I'd like to call on first Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, University of Hawaii. Yes, sir. Chair, Vice Chair, and members, again, my name is Ken Grace. I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, the university supports, strongly supports the measure, uh, so long as it does not adversely impact the priorities of the University of Hawaii Board of Regents budget request. Uh, the LIFE program, and LIFE stands for Local and Immigrant Farmer Education Program. Uh, it's been a very in our view, successful and useful program. It's covered every topic from pesticide safety and being able to read labels uh, up, to, uh, up to risk management and crop insurance uh, for a population that's uh, un often underserved. Uh, limited English abilities, uh, that's been expanded into actually focusing on, uh, on uh, women in agriculture as well uh, and on, uh, on uh, Hawaiian agricultural uh, efforts uh, in companies. It's, a, it's all about partnership. We partner with a lot of different programs within the college, uh, as well as with external parties. But a key point is that for the decade it's been in existence, about a decade, uh, it, it's exclusively the programming aspect is, uh, is, has been supported initially by the EPA and the USDA in the form of grants, and then by individual grants that the faculty have been able to obtain, much like the 4-H support that I mentioned a minute ago in prior testimony. Uh, what, this, uh, what this measure would do would be to provide some programming support for that particular outreach effort uh, into the, the immigrant and underserved community uh, in agriculture. And we feel that that's a, a valid, it would, it would really be a useful, a useful uh, measure at this time. Uh, the measure is blank. Uh, the amount we would suggest, if the committee is willing to entertain it, uh, would be on the order of 150000 which would allow another temporary agent hire uh, to assist in the program, as well as additional staff, travel, and programming costs. And again, happy to answer any questions or concerns. Thank you. <coughs> Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. I think got lead in support. Uh, Russell Simon. Or should I say uh, Simon Russell? I'm sorry. Hawaii Farmers Union United. Hawaii Farm Bureau. Chris. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members. Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. I want to speak to this one um, on a personal level uh, as it relates to Ka'u coffee farmers. Um, these folks were generationally Excuse dependent. Me, can I just stop you there? Did I yeah. just call you on the wrong bill? We're on life, yeah? 1039? Yeah. I'm on 995. Okay, sure. yes, okay. Yeah, um, sorry. No, no, these folks were generationally dependent on the sugar plantation, and one day there was no more sugar plantation. They turned to growing coffee, and they've been quite successful at it. And they owe... Uh, a large part of that to the LIFE program. These folks have been very passionate traveling to the far reaches of the state at night to meet with farmers in the evening when it's convenient for them to educate them on a whole host of business planning, uh, as Ken said, uh, risk management, uh, best, uh, uh, best farm management practices, integrated pest management that helped them navigate through coffee berry borer, um, the list is endless, and the staff that they've had uh, managing this program or, or executing it has been very passionate. Um, I would say that uh, uh, the Ka'u coffee industry would not be where it is now were it not for this 
this life program. It has helped transition a community, and, and I'm sure this, uh, this model is replicated across the state, but it's helped transition a community from a monocrop culture to a diversified culture where we have now folks who are independent businessmen and women who were dependent on the plantation prior. So we appreciate your support for this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, Bennett Musalucha. In support. John McCuff. In support. Jerry Sugano. In support. Douglas Vincent. Oh. Well, we just stand in support of the, the profession. We stand by ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bennett. Uh, Douglas Vincent. In support, this is uh, Janet in support. Anyone present would like to provide a testimony that we haven't called upon? We've got one, uh, two uh, late testimonies, all in support, and uh, they will not be present. An individual, Carl Evanson, and also David Arcala from the Land Use Research Foundation of Hawaii. Members, question on House Bill 1039. Okay. Yes. Mr. Grace, Mr. Uh, we learn something new every day. I didn't know there was a specific immigrant outreach program. Mm -hmm. How is it different that you do for non-immigrants that you do with the immigrant programs? A, well, it, when it originated, it was actually supported by EPA uh, efforts and funds uh, for pesticide label and integrated pest management education of that population had limited English abilities. Ten years so that ago. was the initial focus. And in fact, we translated materials into, uh, into Thai and Laotian and a number of different languages at that time. Uh, as that funding tended to dissipate, as federal funding generally does, and that's fine, uh, the slack was picked up by a lot of partnerships with other faculty and programs uh, like the risk management program within the college, okay? Uh, so it's a focused effort. I would say that uh, it's much more focused on those who as uh, Chris said, need, tra need to transition or really need help or recent immigrants to the islands uh, and hardworking but need help in navigation of how to, how to go about it. So the business plan aspect came in pretty strongly about in the first few years of the program. So that's, I, I mean, it's, it's a focused effort. You know, our college is built around a number of different kind of program areas, uh, largely dependent on the need and the ability to bring in funds to try to support that, that particular if area. We, so that's, that's how it happens. If we look at the universe of farmers yeah. or... Yeah. What percent are those immigrants or previous immigrants within the recent 10, 15 years? Well, boy, I'm sorry. Maybe the Farm Bureau would have an idea on that. I don't, Representative Ward. Uh, uh, but... Can, can yeah. we stop there? Because that, that's sure. important. I want to see yeah. how specific we're... Let me stress that the program isn't only focused on new immigrants, It's though. just local and it, it, It's underserved populations of farmers. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a broader focus, and that's included assisting female-managed corporation or farming operations, which sometimes are a little marginalized, and other, other groups. So it's not only immigrants, but that certainly is in the name. Let, let me change the Certainly. Uh, I, I got a follow-up to that not only how many farmers are immigrants, what's the labor force of the farming, the ones who are doing the, the, the work? Yeah. Well, this program is called Life uh, Education for Immigrant Farmers, who's targeted for. I'm just when, looking for the universe, the numbers, that's all. Well, but when you go to the meetings, it's not just immigrant farmers. It's young people, it's Howleys, it's everybody. But but you're curious specifically yeah, about wanna, more than what? More than half. Yeah. More, than, more than half are we? I would say closer yeah. to, in some communities, it's nearly 100%. But I would say overall in the universe, I would say... About 75%. Are they the laborers or are they the farmers who own and operate the, the business? The latter. They own and operate. So we have yeah. an immigrant farming community. That's the backbone of the farming community, Yeah. generally speaking. Uh, this is a very down-in-the-weeds question to uh, Mr. Grace. You have a basal SWAT team 
Uh, that was confusing as one of your pro a basal SWAT team. Is that some kind of an Italian vegetable posse or what? <laughs> uh, I, happen, I happen to be Italian yeah, if you have questions on that as well, sir. Something between you. You can address the ethnic aspect. I mean, you have a lot of programs, yeah. but I've never heard of a basal SWAT team in the Department of Agriculture. Have you heard of basil downy mildew? <laughs> tremendous issue and tremendous problem for our basil growers. Basil's a high value herb crop. Yes. Uh, and downy mildew and other, other pests and diseases have really hit it. So we call it a SWAT team because it means there was a group of agents and specialists and researchers who came together to focus hard on that issue. Uh, and a lot of the immigrant farmers, not a lot, but basil growers sometimes are those immigrant farmers. So that's an extension. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the different things that come into play to support the program and the different people in the college so that work to support it. Basil downy mildew remains a problem, can be managed uh, to some extent, but it's still an issue. We're still working on it. In fact, we're supporting research on it right now. Is there any Italian addition to that? <laughs> uh, I would only offer that the, uh, the staff that, that administers the program uh, is very targeted in the, the topics that they bring to the community. And they poll the community often prior to developing the program that they're going to present. They determine what the needs are. So it's very localized. It's very targeted. They're not talking about basil to coffee farmers. It's very effective. I'm sure there's some farmers who'd love to see a red fire ant SWAT team, or at least called by them. It shows more of an aggressive approach. And there kind of is one, but they don't use don't the term that. SWAT. That's yeah. true. Just a quick comment. You know, 65, I believe, of our farm, 50% of our farms, or we've, what, 7,000 farms by the last census in the state, and I think it's something like 65 or more percent are under 10 acres. So a lot of those would be that component of very of small immigrant farmers that are coming into the state and uh, supporting the enterprise. Good day, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions, members? If not, thank you very much, and uh, uh, we'll move on to the next uh, uh, bill, uh, House Bill 1051 relating to agriculture, uh, adopting rules relating to a declaration of Hawaii Origin of Agricultural Commodities, uh, Department of Agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, Hawaii County Council, Margaret Wiley in, I think she's gone, in support. Uh, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Chris. Stand up with testimony in support, sir. Thank you very much. Jim Wayman, Hawaii <coughs> Common. Hi. Stand up testimony in support. Thank you very much. Roger Kaivi, I said. Stand on Richard testimony in support. Standing in support. Uh, from Intelligent Brands, I have only the first name, Michael. Okay, in support. Hawaii Paradise Coffee, Jean Claude uh, Drui, D R U I, in support. Hawaii Macadamia Nut, in support. Greenwell Farms, in support. Paradise Beverages, in support. Johnson & Johnson, in support. Hawaii Coffee Growers, in support. Uh, we've got rims. I don't see any not supporting. Any present here that would like to uh, provide uh, comments for standing support. Okay. Oh, yeah. please. Great. Sorry, I can do this in far less than two minutes. Uh, my name is Gary Strawn. I'm a Kona coffee farmer. I'm also the president of the Kona did you coffee council. The written testimony? I did not. Oh, okay. If you want to later on for the record, you may submit with Thank you. Thank so. you. Sorry, please it's kind proceed. of last no, minute and proceed. it was hard for me to... Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, let me start by delivering some good news. I have, I, all of my income comes from Kona Coffee Farming and I take it pretty seriously. Uh, I have sold out the last couple of years. I've managed to sell all of my coffee. This year, my storage room is overflowing. I don't know where I'm going to store all of it. I've had a very good year. I hope to sell out of that. My point is, 
I don't need your help. <laughs> I don't need the help of um, more bills, more okay. legislation. The You're stuff here to tell us you don't need us. <laughs> Works pretty good. Okay. Um, so I'm frankly getting tired of flying over here constantly because there is a small group of uh, activists in the Kona Coffee community that loves to come up with uh, legislation. The current one, they're calling truth and labeling, and they've gotten a huge petition for it. When you look at it, it really has very little to do with truth and labeling. Uh, they're trying to get everybody to list all the ingredients, which is like proprietary recipes that change from one bag to the next. Uh, if they were doing just that, I might even support it. They're also trying to get those ingredients listed on the front of the bag. They're also trying to change the minimum blend percentage from 10% to 51%. They're doing all these things, which makes me look at it and be like, do they know it's going to fail? Why are they, if they would just do one step at a time, it might pass. Uh, my point is that I feel like these are constantly issues that are coming up from activists who want to get in front of the legis legislature. I'm tired of it. With Jerry Kahana's help and the Department of Ag, I think we can handle ourselves. I support this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other testifiers here? Okay. I'd just like to say that uh, we have one, two, three. Uh, late testimonies, in one in support, uh, two in support, and one in opposition. And uh, they do not plan to be present uh, to provide their testimony. Hearing none, uh, members, uh, questions? No, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to our final two House bills. House Bill 1273, relating to uh, renewable energy. And uh, we'll start off uh, with the Department of Agriculture. Please. I'm tired of standing up. We're going to sit down and just apply. Just sit down for a little bit. So, morning, members. Uh, Ken Kakisako, the Department of Agriculture. We do support the intent of this measure. We just have a, a two amendments that we think will maybe clarify. Um, and maybe tighten up the bill a little bit. So, we have submitted that to you in writing and did want to say we're available for any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, from DBDT, uh, Louis uh, Salvaria. Good morning, oh. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Cameron Black on behalf of DBED. We stand on our written testimony supporting the intent. Certainly. Thank you very much. Carty uh, Chang, he was here previously. Carty, I'm Roy Hardy, I'm the deputy for the Water Commission within yes. DLNR. Um, you have our written comment, which we stand by, but basically it's one comment um, pertaining to that particular section, uh, 23A under subsection 205.5A, that um, you should refer to um, that section the state water code 174C. You referring to uh, to the bill? If I can ask you what page yes. you're talk, talking uh, about, and I want. It's under paragraph. That's quite okay. Uh, when we have eight. questions, I'll call you up to further explain. Speech 18. Okay. And simply that it refer to the uh, state water code in general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Come on. Thank questions. you. Gotcha. Okay, uh, we have uh, no other uh, on our testifier list. Any others who would like to? Mr. Mayor, it's ready. Oh, no, I'm sorry, you are on the list. Thank you, uh, Chair. I'll be, I'll be yeah. brief. Um, no, no. We support the intent, provided that the hydroelectric facilities on agricultural land are supportive of and ancillary to uh, bona fide agricultural production. Okay, thank you very much. Any others on House Bill 1273? Uh, any late testimony? None? Okay, members, questions, comments? Chair? Mr. Mayor, if the fire puts in a hydroelectric uh, system as per the bill, will he or she get a renewable uh, energy tax credit? If so, or not, so why not? Uh, I'm not aware, sir. I did can't answer that question. Is Dbed here probably? Deep, is Dbed? Would like to call on her? Does anybody know whether a dam system or a hydroelectric is going to qualify for a tax credit? Nobody knows. Do you think it should? 
Yes. I think it should also. So I think this would be a friendly amendment, but that's going beyond decision making where we are at testimony. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, any other questions on uh, uh, 1273? Can I have you come up, please? If I heard you right, you were making a comment on a, uh, on a certain page, a certain line. Could you yeah. elaborate that? You, you lost me for a while. Okay, sorry. sorry. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was just trying to be brief. On page 18, Page 18. Uh, yeah, under 23A, subsection 205, 4.5A, it talks about in-stream flow standards. There are more surface water regulations than in-stream flow standards. That's this part of the whole. So we're suggesting to refer in there the entire water code, 174C. Um, therefore, it would take care of all the surface water regulations and uh, other things that are within the code. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, oh, wait. maybe we can extend the testimony time to two hour ten. I mean, uh, two minutes, ten seconds. <laughs> House Bill twelve seventy three. Our final on. Uh, no, this is not the final. I'm sorry. Thirteen seventy two. No, thirteen yes, the final one. Thirteen seventy two. Right. Relating to public utilities, uh, Department of Agriculture. Department stands on his testimony, offering comments. In support. Offering comments. Comments. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Uh, DBDT, a representative from is that the Office of Planning? Yes, this is for the Business and Economic Development. Yeah, the Office of Planning? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Leo Sanchez. No. We stand on our testimony. Right. Oh, okay. Um, with okay. our comments and noting yes. our request for your consideration of proposed amendments to that to the section. Okay, thank you. Our testimony. Public Utilities Commission. My goodness, we're going to get a testifier. His name is Randy Iwasi. He's here. No? Uh, they provided uh, comments in their written testimony. Do we have any other uh, late testimony for this? Any present here that would like to provide testimony on, on House Bill 1372? If not, uh, members, uh, questions? None? Hearing none? Recess for decision making. <laughs>
uh, the session on the Committee on Agriculture, Thursday, February 2, uh, is reconvening for the uh, purposes of decision making on House Bill 504 relating to pesticides. The recommendation is to pass this out with a house for, uh, with an HD1, blanking out uh, the appropriations and putting on a defective date of uh, 1 20 2015. Uh, members of the committee, on any legislation that refers to an appropriation that is blanked out, the committee report will uh, reference the amount that was blanked out, if any, and also the wording uh, in the committee report. Should the Committee on Finance deliberate this measure further, your committee, meaning the Agriculture Committee, respectfully requests that it consider appropriating and the amount of the appropriation for the purpose of and whatever it may be. Okay? And we will include in this particular committee report, going back to 504 House Bill, uh, the Department of Agriculture had a number of proposals and also a, uh, a proposal draft. Uh, we will uh, put that in the committee report for the next committee to uh, take consideration of. Members, comments, questions, if not, question. Question, Chair. Did I hear correctly? You said 1-20-2015. One 1-20-2015. 20, 20, Wow, that's really future, is Other than that, January, January 20. Oh, I thought you meant the year 1,020,200. Yeah, the year oh, 2015. Okay, I read it. Sorry. Is that okay? Nobody questioned me on that last year. What you did. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, no, 2020, I'm sorry. The year 2020. Correction? I caught out of The year is 2020. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> 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 January 1st? January 20th. <laughs> I will say again, January 20th, the year 2020. That's very clear. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, with a representative from Hawaii Kai. No questions, Chair. Vice Chair, for the vote. Okay, House Bill 504, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Brower? Aye. Representative Cachola? Aye. Representative Choi? Aye. Representative Ito? Aye. Representative Kaukami? Aye. Representative Kong? Aye. Representative Ono? Aye. Representative Tokioka? Aye. Representative Woodson? Aye. Rep Representative Matsumoto? Aye. Representative Ward? Aye. Chair, your uh, recommendation is passed. Thank you very much. Moving on to House Bill 509 relating to the protection of uh, taro. The recommendation is to pass this bill as is. Questions? Not the chair. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, your comments on this. Uh, yeah, Chair. Um, in, in regards to this bill, um, based on the testimony from the um, DLNR and the Taro Task Force, uh, I've circulated uh, HD1, which uh, on page 5, uh, line 6, uh, adds that Taro lands or redefines the Taro lands to mean any undeveloped public lands situated in the land use conservation conservation district pursuant to chapter 205 which then will bring the bill in compliance with the preamble uh, sta stating that uh, this would address only uh, state conservation lands so I'm recommending that we move forward HD1 mm -hmm. as proposed so uh, my, my comment as is, uh, please disregard that, but members' uh, comments? If not, uh, passing with HD1, Vice Chair. Okay. HB 509, recommendation is to pass with amendment. 
Noting all members present, are there any with reservations? Any no's? Chair, your motion, uh, your recommendation is approved. Thank you very much. And then just yeah. cover your back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for waiting. Uh, moving on to HB 534. Uh, Relating to Section uh, 266-17 Hawaii Revised Statute, etc., etc., the chair's recommendation is to pass as is. However, in the committee report, we will uh, insert comments uh, which uh, refer that there has been conversation with the chair of the committee, with the attorney general's office, with one of the attorney, uh, uh, one of the uh, attorneys in the attorney general's office, that regarding this particular bill, there is some thoughts and some concerns. I shall have further conversations uh, uh, with her, and if I have a timely uh, comment from her, that will also be inserted into the committee report. But with that in mind, again, the Attorney General's office, quote, unquote, some thoughts and concerns, but we still believe that this marriage is being passed out as is. Comments, not Vice Chair. HB 534, recommendation is to pass as is. Noting the attendance of all members, are there any reservations? Anybody voting no? Chair, your recommendation is approved. Thank you very much. Moving on to House Bill 608, authorizing the issuance of special purpose revenue bonds to Waimea Nui Community Development Corporation. Of the, of this, we had an extended conversation uh, with the legal, and we're recommending this be passed out as is. Also, very legal recommendation and discussion with chair and vice chair also included in the conversation. This uh, comment will be included in the committee's report because, quote, the, because this is a triple referral with the triple referral deadline fast approaching, the chair recommends that we pass this bill out as is. And in the committee, in the committee report, request the next committees should they consider this bill, look into which part of Chapter 39A is the proper part for the issuance of SPRBS SPRBs to assist Waimea Hui Community Development Corporation. The bill does not specify the part. We understand that. And it's referring to the $45 million SPRB financing. Questions? <clears throat> Comments? Comment, Chair. No. Uh, I support the measure, but I think $45 million may not be realistic in its attainability, but that's another issue. But I think passing it on is the right thing, but I'm not sure it's attainable. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the comment was uh, he uh, agrees with, uh, with the recommendation, but the sort of questions uh, the amount of the $45 million, but he supports uh, the legislation and the stands. This will go on to the next committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other, any other comments? If not, Vice Chair. House Bill 608, recommendation is to pass unamended. Uh, noting the attendance of all members, are there any members voting with reservations? Okay, Representative Kong. Anyone else? Okay, anybody voting no? Okay, Chair, your recommendation is approved. Thank you. Moving on to House Bill 627 relating to a farm school program. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this out uh, with an HD1, blanking out the uh, amount of the appropriation stated as $150,000 and putting on uh, the defective date of 1 January 20, 2050, 50, 50, 50, 50. Comments? 
If not, Chair. Right. May I make a comment? Sure. Um, if, if the Chair would agree, I suggest the committee report suggests that there be metrics attached to this measure. Otherwise, it's, it's an appropriation. We're not going to be able to see whether it works or it doesn't work. So in other words, if they're able to measure what they're doing. Anyway, that's just a friendly suggestion. Sure. Did you get that? Okay. Yes. Uh, your request uh, will be included in the committee report. Thank you. Comment further, if not vice chair. Okay, House Bill 627, recommendation is to pass with amendments, noting the attendance of all members. Anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is approved. Thank you very much. Moving on to House Bill uh, uh, 823 relating to agricultural theft. Uh, this uh, the recommendation is to pass this out with a HB uh, House Draft 1, blanking out the appropriations amount of two, $200,000 and putting uh, the same defective date of uh, January 20, 2050. Any questions, comments? Vice Chair. House Bill 823. The recommendation is to pass with amendments, noting the attendance of all members. Are there any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. House Bill 849 relating to <coughs> agriculture amends Hawaii's Right to Farm Act. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this as is. Any comments? Chair. Chair Collins. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, out of respect to the Chair, I'll be letting you know that I'll be voting no uh, for some simple reasons. One, I am not convinced that this bill is necessary to achieve the intent that the bill covers. I believe that current statute stands. Secondly, I believe that the little island of Kauai is leading the way as far as going out and attempting to cut through the fog on the issue. And I mean that by saying that we have partnered with the state, the county and the state have partnered to assemble a joint fact-finding committee comprised of stakeholders from the industry, farmers, people with science backgrounds to do some research and separate some of the fact from fiction. So I believe that this is unnecessary at the time and uh, premature. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, and uh, that's uh, very much appreciated. Uh, further comments on this legislation? Okay. If not, uh, Vice Chair for the vote. It was, okay. uh, the recommendation was as is. House Bill 849, recommendation is to pass as is, noting the attendance of all members. Uh, is any members voting with reservations? With reservations. Okay. Representative Tokioka, Representative Kong. Reservations. Oh, Representative Ono. Anyone else? Okay. Noting the no vote of Representative Kawakami, are there any other uh, voting no? Um, okay. Vote no. Representative Matsumoto. Okay. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Moving on. House Bill 850 relating to the Agricultural Extension Service. The recommendation is to pass this out with an HD1, blanking out the appropriation amount of $700,000 and also inserting a defective date. Members, questions? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. House Bill 850. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the attendance of all members, are there anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. House Bill 853, relating to agriculture, establishes a K-12 agricultural workforce development pipeline. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this out with a HD-1, blanking out the appropriations of uh, 500 thousand uh, dollars and inserting a defective date. Members, questions? If not, Vice Chair. House Bill 853, the recommendation is to pass with amendments, 
Noting the attendance of all members, is anyone voting with rec uh, reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Moving on to House Bill 870 relating to food, the recommendation is to pass this out with an HD1, uh, blanking out the appropriations amount of $1 million and inserting a defective date. Questions, comments? Vote. Thank you. House Bill 870, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the attendance of all members, is anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. Moving on to HB 995 uh, relating to agriculture, the recommendation is to pass this as is. Uh, this, this is an appropriations bill also, but the appropriations amount is blank, uh, so we'll leave it as such and uh, to pass this out as is, but we'd like to have in the committee report noting uh, uh, the comments from the uh, University of Hawaii uh, testimony <clears throat> that uh, an observation uh, that may be a suggestion, if I may say, that uh, such funding be considered in the form of a, a, of a grant. Is that right? Yeah. That should be accepted. Thank you very much. Uh, as is, uh, Vice Chair, excuse me, comments, questions? If not, the vote. Okay, House Bill 995, the recommendation is to pass as is. Noting the attendance of all members. Is anyone voting with reservations? Any Report? <laughs> Any no votes? Okay. No, but he said it's not no. He said no problem. No problem. <laughs> I thought he voted no. I think it's no. <laughs> I, I think there is a problem. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, House Bill 1039, making appropriation for the local and immigrant farmer education program. Uh, the recommendation is to pass as is. This is an appropriations bill, but the amount uh, is blank, so we can pass this out as is. Any comments, any questions? If not, Vice Chair. House Bill 1039, recommendation is to pass as is. Noting the attendance of all members, is anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to House Bill 1051 relating to agriculture, uh, DOA for adoption of rules. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this as is. Members, questions, comments? Vice Chair. Okay, House Bill 1051, the recommendation is to pass as is. Uh, noting the attendance of all members, is anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. Moving on to... Which one was that? 1273. 1273. Moving on to 1372. No, no, 1273, I'm sorry. Uh, relating to renewable energy. Uh, the chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Questions, comments? Chair. Sorry. Representative Tokyo. Uh, chair, I spoke with the introducer of the bill, and um, I would ask the chair if you would consider the um, suggestions in amendments that were made by the Department of Ag and the, de uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Okay. To, to the effect that we can put that in the committee report would be okay and yes. as is. Yes. Right. So no. Okay. That was uh, DBED and... No. <coughs> um, agriculture, the Department oh, of okay. and, and the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. So no. And... Okay. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Chair, you Representative Warren. Uh, another friendly suggestion. Uh, and I haven't spoken to the author of the bill, but if it's possible to put that uh, hydroelectric production facilities also would qualify for a renewable energy tax credit. I think it's very important to incentivize the farmers to do that. We know that Richard Haas on the Big Island has done it. I'm not sure if he got a tax credit. And 
it would be nice if it was put in statute, or at least in the committee report, Chair. The, the farmers, just like the rooftop solar people, get a tax credit. So should the farmers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to pass this bill out as is, but uh, we can make uh, we can insert comments uh, in if, they, if, if that's a preference with you. Uh, that's okay with you uh, in the committee report. You know what's coming? Pick that up. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other? Yeah, um, uh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chair, just Representative to comment, and I, and I heard uh, Rep. Ward earlier talk about the incentive, but uh, it's not referred to finance right now, so there will be some issues with that. Um, and in discussing this with some of the stakeholders, um, putting in incentives is a great idea. But some, of, you know, many of them haven't passed throughout the legislature, so they wanted to use this vehicle to move some things. To along. move it on, and we have two more committees to go yeah. to. Yet yeah. the point was not to amend, but but just mention it. That should be a consideration, perhaps in the future, but not for the immediate one. So I, there's no intent to put a foot in the aisle, Representative Tokyo. You're trying just to put in a poison pill. Huh? No, no. <laughs> hey. Farmers need his help as, as much as anybody else in hydroelectricity. And Mr. Manfredi said it would be a good idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, taking into consideration both the comments from my left and comments from my right, now, th this bill has a long ways to go yet. And uh, what we'll do is uh, just uh, not taking uh, Representative Tokyoka's recommendation, but uh, we won't include that portion that uh, uh, Representative Ward stated, but uh, we do still have a long ways to go going on to two more committees, so we leave that as such and go as is. Okay, any further comments? If not, Vice Chair. Okay, House Bill 1273, recommendation is to pass as is. Noting the attendance of all members, anyone voting with reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, moving on to the final item of today's uh, hearing, House Bill 1372, public utilities, uh, relating to public utilities. Uh, after all testimony, et cetera, uh, the committee's, uh, the committee, the chair's uh, recommendation is to pass this out as is. Comments. Chair, same request as uh, 1273. To put in a report. Report. Same request as 1273 to add in the committee report. Oh, yes. Okay. The comments from Ag and uh, DLNR. Okay. Thank you. Uh, further to insert the comments of, I, were you referring to what I was going to, uh, the comments of DBEDT? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, no. 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 Just, Ag, just Ag and the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Okay. Is DBEDT here? I may have put down the wrong uh, department down. Okay, maybe it was just an egg. And it it could be them too, but yeah. that didn't okay. come from me. I'll check with that if DBEDT. Did DBED make a comment? No? You did, huh? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other comments? If not, Vice Chair. House Bill 1372. The recommendation is to pass as is, noting the attendance of all members. Are there any reservations? Any no votes? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. There being no further business on the agenda. 